Hey, good morning, all of you very good people from Kit Kat and me. Happy Cat. <laughs> hey, my boy. Yes, so day three of this, how this piece begins. Uh, uh, right, still getting reminders on my <laughs> from my new hard drive. Uh, operating system etc all right uh, let me take a swig of tea first from my from my tea vase jug right yes Kit Kat um, what should I start with today um, gotta start somewhere come on guy oh yes let's let's use some of this Let's use some of this this green. Let's take those out. That one. Uh, it's like a, a sort of a mossy a mossy green. That I like to use. And, oh, let's get the the vegan poo brown as well. Uh, yeah, that'll do for now. Okay. Okay, right, Kit Kat. Uh, in fact, let me just start with the vegan poo brown. Seems a decent color to start using. Uh, it's sort of a goldy <laughs> color. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, that's that's right. That's all I need. bit of warping. No, it's not too bad. Right. Mm. I actually really want to to do a little bit of work with my charcoal up the top here. The end of this. Ah. Is the uh, the facing wall at the end of the at the end of the pool with the horizon line just above it, um, and that is in blue. So I must not that blue. I need a darker blue just to. It's just a hint of it over there. Uh, yeah, and then there's a hint further along as well. Okay. 
much. Right, right, right. I think it's time to employ a new. Uh, there's a couple of little stubs I can still use over here. Right, so I'm going to start. Start with where the the foam foam is. Good morning, Hardy Dollars. Mm, I think <laughs> I'm a bit asked about face today, but there's a there's a kind of a a very rickety very rickety balustrade thing that that sits atop the wall uh, that I want to to just start by oh come on. You know, sometimes these charcoal sticks just get these horrible little hard bits inside them and they just don't want to, they don't want to engage. There we go, that's a bit better. Ah, uh, that's a bit better. Right, so there's this, there's this rickety sort of balustrade thing that runs on top of the wall and it just then disappears into spray eventually I just want to demarcate where that is for the moment That will do, my son. And as I said, it's very rickety, so it's, it's obviously been there for decades upon decades upon decades, and perhaps even broken off at some point, so there's this bit sticking out over here. Um, and it's at the very forefront of this constant barrage of waves that, 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 that come through there. So it's obviously got little bits of, uh, of, um, uh, What do you call it? Barnacles and all sorts of things that, that have that have attached themselves to it over the years. And and of course and it's battered. You know, it's and then I can only assume is is just from decades of of battering from the waves that come crashing past here all the way through. So they come the waves come trundling through into this little sort of bay area to the to the left um, and the, the, the tidal pool kind of juts out of it at this point at least the corner of it does so the waves catch the corner and then and then cascade along this wall charging through and, and constantly battering this wall of course water is water is weight so uh, They leave their mark eventually over the years and, and so we end up with a, a really gnarled balustrade 
it's really seen the test of time, hasn't it? All right, be like that. This is really all just white water with all these waves pounding through here. A little bit of very pale blue poking, poking in, but I'm just indicating for now where that all is. So it's filling in. more extensively on this but essentially we've got this gigantic spray thingamajig <coughs> in this area and I'm just indicating where it's going to be um, so to give you get an idea um, <coughs> but I will be using acrylic to essentially complete that with. And that will be with its spray and everything else, but that's kind of where it is. And then it breaks over the wall into the pool over here. And so we've then got Reflective surface all the way down here, etc., etc. Really, I don't need to touch that more at this point. It's just a, a vague sort of indication of, of where this, where this great big splash arises from. Uh, Right. 
Nice. And then in the distance, we've got the we've got the horizon horizon line. so on and so forth. Right, so I think in terms of uh, in terms of technique and so on, um, basically it's a case of of not trying to complete each part um, that I'm doing. So in other words, I, for example, the, the, the main attraction, <laughs> if you want to call it that for this, for this piece is that, is that big splash. But it only becomes really apparent right at the very end uh, when I start to work with acrylics. And, and the, the acrylics is, is, the last, is the very last phase of, of, in other words, acrylic paint. So that becomes the last phase that I give to it, give to the piece with with the extreme highlights. Um, it's it's sort of a whiteout almost. Excuse me, if you can imagine, because the, the 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 water surface behind the other side of the wall is virtually completely white because it's these great big rollers that come through, leaving their leaving their trail of uh, of foam on the surface of the water and it and it. And obviously, it it, it 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 comes over the wall here, so that we've got lots of foam even in the pool um, itself. And yeah, so we've got lots of white behind here, uh, kind of almost overexposed. Um, so then it becomes it's a case of you know the, as I was explaining yesterday that the, I like to evolve each artwork. Or allow each artwork to evolve um, almost as one. So it's almost, if you can imagine, a, a, a video buffering. You know, um, it, it becomes. Or if you look at, if you look at, um, uh, if you select a location on on, on uh, Google Maps or Google Earth or something like that, and and it slowly starts to. To, to, to take on more clarity and and so on and depending on your bandwidth <laughs> which isn't always the best for me so it's a perfect example where um, it it starts to pixel by pixel starts to get more uh, more finite in terms of its clarity <clears throat> and um, and then eventually the whole the whole but the whole image emerges well with with uh, with with maps sometimes it's it's block by block but um, but by and large, it, it, it becomes clear overall. Um, and that's kind of what how I like to work. I don't like to perfect one area at a time because that, as I said, um, it, it for me takes the soul out of my work. Because that means I'm, I'm, I'm trying to maintain control over over what's over what's happening and, and as I said as well yesterday I think that the artwork itself as well as the tools that I'm using um, as well as you know has have an equal role to play along with myself as the artist does that make sense um, And as much as the as uh, as a samurai is is uh, is made by the sword, not necessarily by the person. <laughs> the samurai is a, at least the sword is is an extension of the of of the of the soul of the of the human of the of the mind of the intent it's not an inert inanimate object we think about this we think in terms of this with our cars sometimes some of us 
Um, others will call, would call that romanticism, romanticizing something that is that is inert. It doesn't have a ha, have a soul. It doesn't have a heart. But what does? What doesn't? <laughs> We're all material at the end of the day. We're all composed of cells, just like, you know, any... My damn laptop has a, has a heart, of course. It lost its heart. <laughs> it, had, it, had, it had to have a triple bypass. It had to have a, a, a brain replacement. I can think of a number of people who need a brain replacement, actually. So I'm just using a this sort of a mossy green to just to add some subtle colour into this piece. Where the it's not all sort of golds and yellow. I I, I really don't I don't want to get into into having establishing a specific color because that's what we that's as I, was, as I have been explaining that's what we see the first thing that we see is oh it's all gold this this because it's reflecting the sand um, you know we get the reflection of the sand and, and at the bottom of the of the pool but it's not it's not because there's so many other colors involved because where there's shadow it's green um, um, where there's Reflective surface. It's pale blue because of this because of the reflection of the sky above, etc., etc. So and so we continue. So uh, what I'm trying to do is is um, add the color subtly enough such that the charcoal work beneath that I first started with is still apparent all over the place isn't even the, even in the heaviest areas of, of the use of uh, pastel um, still see the charcoal through because it's charcoal is my foundation of of uh, of contrast, light and shade. Right, get it, got it, good. I don't want to. Mm, mm, okay, maybe I'll just do this for now. I want you to just all of these areas that are lovely and lovely and golden, but they're also there's also a lightness to them because they not only do they have shadow um, shadows cast on them by the water surface that we can't see, <laughs> um, but there's also highlights which are more which are whiter. Um, so I'll, I'll add those highlights with my white Conte and chalk pastel later. Still a way to go. In the meantime, this will do. A little bit of baby, at least um, vegan poo brown. I really must stop using that term, but I love it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I think Faber Castell should actually should actually launch a colour that is 
that is called Baby at least Vegan Poo Brown. I think it's and a really great nod to all the vegans out there. Not that I've ever seen a vegan poo, by the way, just just saying. <laughs> If there's any vegans watching, you can tell me whether I'm on the right course or not. Hmm. through I'm continuously um, using my charcoal uh, to just to just to bring that little additional contrast where it's needed and what's quite nice it, um, is that when you've worked a little with, with, with charcoal and Conte and, and, and you've got these sort of streaks of, of, of the paper that you can see behind it, when you, when you go over it with the charcoal, it doesn't, it doesn't blemish the, the pastel area, so that, but it only takes in the areas where, the, where it's more bare, so you get these nice little streaks and it just See like here, it just takes in the areas where in the negative spaces. It brings lovely contrast, it really does. It, it just adds adds a whole lot of body to the piece. Um, so maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> What's the other one? I don't know, you know if you get it anymore. I, I, I obviously I haven't I haven't partaken in uh, in uh, hair products for many years, but um, it was called M Maybelline. Maybe it's Maybelline. No, body mist kissed. Body mist. Body mist. <laughs> I remember that. No, oh, that wasn't a hair product. Yeah, that was a. What he missed, I think that was a kind of a, a deodorant or something, I don't know. I don't know if that was a, 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 a uniquely South African product. But what he missed, kissed. <laughs> there's a, there's a, a spark from the past. The thing about the thing about charcoal and pastel, um, especially charcoal, in my experience, is that it's incredibly forgiving. Um, it's such a wonderful medium to work with. I feel um, even though I'll admit that that years ago that. Um, at uh, college and what have you, um, I hated, 
hated <laughs> with a passion charcoal and pastel. Now, how ironic is that? I couldn't stand using them. And perhaps it was because they were, you know, and I still don't like, you know, I've got a smudge. Um, I still don't like using um, uh, oil pastels. They're horrible things. In as much as I don't like using oil paints, to be honest. Um, I, I guess we all have our we all have our, our um, preferences. But oil paints, at least oil pastels, are just grim, grim things. I don't know. They don't, they don't blend very nicely and they get they're a little stodgy. And, and perhaps that's why I just don't have an, an aversion to them because, um, anyway, it's... it's they're probably very nice <laughs> and used used the proper way i don't know uh, but it's um, anyway i just don't like them yeah and then charcoals as well i just didn't i didn't i didn't ever take to them until many much more recent years of course i wasn't doing any art until more recent years at all um but back in those days of course because i you know having having done graphic design which is more as i've been explaining in, pre in previous sessions um graphic design is more commercial art commercialized art and even then in latter decades it's become digitized so literally for literally for 30 30 years nearly i didn't i didn't pick up a i didn't pick up a, a paintbrush in fact i did not pick up a paintbrush for all of that time because everything that was done illustration wise was was um was done with magic markers back in the day and that was the whole that was the big tool to use in advertising and and graphic design and that was the big quick and easy um illustration il illustration tool um it's immediate so uh and then of course the advent of of computers and in, in terms of or the proliferation of computers in in design and advertising um negated all of it so that eventually i wasn't using a single uh virtually not even a pencil everything everything was on was on computer And anyway, by that stage, I wasn't a skivvy anymore, so I wasn't, uh, I, I, I wasn't doing the renderings and what have you, which was handed down to, to, uh, to, to, to new designers, to junior designers, etc. Um, so yeah, that's 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 kind of been the progress of things uh, for me in my experience is that uh, because I didn't I didn't follow that, um, you know you get you get the commercial art side and then you get the fine art side, and I didn't I went that way so you know eventually you know the fine art is of course perhaps what I should have done or could have done but but then again I don't know it probably wouldn't have turned out the way I. It, 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 it was right whatever it was was right at the time and and is still right now but um, I I don't think I would have ever have taken very well to find out to be honest to be brutally honest um, it, it, yeah I'm glad in a way that I didn't as well because I learnt a great deal. 
I learned to observe very differently as a graphic designer. Very, very differently. Um, and, and also to enga engaging with engaging with public, engaging with consumers and clients and that sort of thing through artistic expression was 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 very very important more so much more so than than with than with with, with fine art would have would have in that route um but gauging with the mind of the observer um that was important so so this is why i guess i come to this this point in my development as an artist where i am my translation, uh, my rendition of what I see, my interpretation is also geared towards um, attracting an energy in the in how people observe, how we observe, how we you know. So something that is attractive in terms of its composition, I guess. There's a, there is a commercialism to what I do, even if it's quite vague, very vague, in fact. But there is a commercialism to it, because there's that... <laughs> there's that Stuyvesant set mentality. I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's my... Maybe it's still my, my advertising days are... Have, I haven't let go of them, perhaps, because... There's that almost subconscious, um, those subconscious triggers that I like to use. And I'm not even aware that I'm using them. <laughs> That's how effective they were. <laughs> you know, the, uh, I, I don't know if for those of you who are old enough to remember the, the cigarette advertising of the, of the, uh, the 70s, the 80s, and, and so on, um, and before that, um, where it was all about, in, 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 and in many cases, you don't actually, you, you wouldn't actually see people smoking in some of the advertising, television um, advertising, etc. You wouldn't see People smoking, but it's 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 because they're not selling cigarettes. They're selling a lifestyle. They're selling a they're selling a um, in Simon Sinek's um, view a it's not about people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. Interesting. Um, So I set about creating or eliciting an emotional response to my work. And I guess in that way, because I am interpreting, interpreting it from my unique perspective, given that we all see the world differently, and therefore I have developed a style that is unique to me. Does that make sense? I suppose. Yeah. And that, and that, my friends, is because of letting go, of actually letting go of the constraints of formal commercial art and design, um, and allowing, but allowing that the, the kind of um, methodology and the techniques and the what have you to start emerging and creating my own etc um, so I'm kind of playing both 
on both teams here. Um, oh, for goodness sake, just leave me alone. All these updates and rubbish, go away. Don't, not about remind me tomorrow or tonight or in an hour. Never, never remind me, ever, go away. Shit, you don't have that option. You see, this is what's going to irritate the living daylights out of me in the days to come, is I'm going to be continuously getting these damn reminders, and I don't want them. Yeah. See, I'm not, I'm not trying to copy exactly what my reference image sh shows me. I am, what I'm doing is I'm referring to the to the reference image to to see like where the highlight areas are, but but also, and then I interpret them myself because I'm not using. The, Charcoals and chalk pastels, whatever, aren't conducive to infinite detail. Um, I can't get hyper realism unless I'm working at an incredibly large scale. Um, because if you look up close here, <laughs> I can't bring you here now, but if you look up very close at what I'm doing, it's fairly abstract. In fact, it's very abstract in what I'm doing. It's just a series of lines and what have you. But as you as you move back, so, um, I have uh, I managed to somehow capture the essence of how the water looks, how it should look, without actually copying a photographic image. So I can't. It cannot be said that I'm that I'm that. This, the technique that I'm using is, photo, is photorealism or hyperrealism, photoreal, photorealism more accurately. Um, because if you look up close, it's nowhere near that. That's what I enjoy about it. Um, that's what I enjoy. The challenge that I enjoy of, of uh, is, is, is in um, capturing the essence of the scene um, in an almost abstract way. Yeah, it's fun. It's a really, it's, uh, I, I, I really enjoy that particular challenge with regards to these artworks. Um, yeah, sometimes I get it right better than other times, uh, but same time, it's, uh, it's uh, I, 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 every single piece that I'm working on, I'm, I'm really thoroughly enjoying because it's a, every day is a new experience. Every day is a new little, oh wow, I didn't see that before type of thing. Absolutely love that about, about it. And, and, and it's so, for me, it's it's like the freedom of being able to relinquish that stranglehold on having to achieve that result of perfection. It has to be right because then I'm taking away I'm taking away the essence of what the tools that I'm using actually represent. A fantastic, a good piece of music for a guitarist, for example, wouldn't be a great piece of music without the guitar, would it? Ah. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd just be going bang, bang, bang. We'd be playing the air guitar, you know. And it's And it's very, it's all too easy to forget. We think we're, 
we think we such we think we're so fantastic that that we as an artist are the ones responsible for this for our creation it's like it's like it's at it's like at the um, academy awards for example why do the winners always you know ha acknowledge other people because it's more than just the actors and the and the uh, the directors and the producers that make the movie a success there has to be all those little people that that you see ream uh, you know um, rows and rows of people and you see in the credits for at the end of a movie it's, it's all of those that make it happen i'm just as an artist and i guess it it can be the same can be said for for every form of 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 of, of creative expression a photographer um <laughs> it's it's without the subject there is no image there is no photograph so we have to take this 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 i don't know spherical approach in our thinking and also when considering an artwork as an, just as an, as an observer and then you start to look at not only the artist the, uh, but, but also what the paint the, the texture um, <laughs> you know it's, it's, so the artist just pulls all those together like the conductor of an orchestra makes them all function together in a pleasing way It's the very same. In commerce, a, 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 a successful organization doesn't function because of its CEO or its chief financial officer or, you know, it's, it's, it's about, it's about the, the, the collective makes it happen. It's the collective energy that makes it happen. It's uh, it's like a question that that always and I always ask when um, when approaching an organisation for coaching or something like that is is what do you think? What is the fuel that drives your organisation? What is the fuel that that powers your your organization it's not it's not the CEO it's not the it's not the um, the executive team it's not the managers it's not it's not even the people but it's the it's the collective quality of the conversations and relationships that are taking place on a daily basis that's what it is that's what makes that's what brings success and that is energy that is energy so you can you can uh, you know, what we would do is is, is assess the uh, the mood of an organization do you have a mood for success that's a collective thing that doesn't come from one or two people kicking ass <clears throat> that is collective that has to be that way and is all the more successful for it productive etc people people working together togetherness is what i was talking about um people working together towards a towards a common result understanding their responsibility in that in that in their role in the in the, in the whole game that's played because everything is a game.
Life is a game. Business is a game. We tend to forget, though, uh, that we are never, even if it is a game, we are responsible because it's not just a game. Um, and not a game in the sense of, 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 a, of a monopoly, you know, or having a, sitting around having a few drinks and playing, and playing, if, you know, tiddlywinks, um, having a laugh. It's not a game in that sense. It's not a game in terms of football or uh, rugby or whatever. Um, it's not a game in that sense. It's not a. It's and it's not a. Um, Xbox game either. It's it's a. Uh, it's the game of life. We need to make the distinction. And then it comes back to who am I? Why am I? For each and every individual. And that, that, and that creates success. So if you're looking for someone to help you increase the productivity of your organization, Give me a shot. <laughs> Unless you think I'm talking absolute hogwash. <laughs> Which I am, incidentally. But no, I... You, the listener, will be able to, to either agree or disagree, and that's entirely up to you. Just like with art, music and every other form of creative expression it is both objective and subjective slowly slowly catch the monkey this is coming together quite well. Um, I must just say, even though I am, I am prattling on, um, I am quite enthralled with this piece. And I've got this damn, mm, mm, the, um, <laughs> my constant bugbear is this, is the, is the, uh, the base of my chair. You know those, it, what, how many? Five, five arms with wheels on the bottom that, 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 that when you move, they start rotating. Um, so that when I, I'm trying to get closer to this thing, but I've got a damn wheel in my way. <laughs> First world problems, huh? First world problems in a third, third, Excuse me, third world country. I think at the end of the day, there's no real distinction between first world and third world. Um, it's the thinking. It's the thinking of the individuals. I guess, I guess this is determined by advancement in technology and, and what have you and resources and all those sort of things that make a country, whether it's first world, second world, third world, whatever it might be. But to me, that's all neither here nor there. And I think that this, that this global pandemic, if you want to call it that, has, uh, has made that all the more apparent, at least to me. Nobody really knows what's going on. Nobody with all the technology and everything else um, 
really has an on, has the answer. Yes, Hardy does. Good morning. For those of you who aren't from South Africa, who have never lived here, um, the Hardy Dar Ibis is our. <laughs> it's a bird about so big, the long beak. It's an ibis, so it's one of the. It's of the ibis family. And it is the most raucous, strident <laughs> sounding, as you can hear, bird. Um, that is our very rude awakening. And there are countless memes to that effect. As Mr. Hardy Dar is currently illustrating <clears throat> vigorously. Um, and uh, yeah, so the, 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 our, our local memes are um, sleeping in, let me play the, play the song of my people. And Mr. Hardy Dar squawks forth. I mean, you've got eight or ten of them circling around, and all doing like a doing like a river dance face-off thing, dance face-off thing, where they. But it's more about a singing face-off thing, uh, <clears throat> and uh, what's that? What's that? <laughs> what's that banjo and? Uh, that's that movie. Oh man, I've forgotten its name, man. Um, oh, that's on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, where there's that, where there's that like face off. So these families of Hardy Dar, Hardy Dars have this, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, and they're all screaming at each other. As they circle around, it can get it can get quite a little bit much. What is the name of that movie? Damn it! One word sounds like. Deliverance. Was it Deliverance? Yes, I think it was. No, yes, no, yes. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Okay, I think we're almost out of time now, folks. So, uh, I am going to, with one final little flourish, No, don't, don't. Okay, I'm done for today, folks. Um, so, yeah, we've made some progress. Progress through the prattle. <laughs> um, anywho, thank you for joining me today. Um, I do appreciate um the the shares and all that sort of stuff so uh and 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 feedback i always please engage with me if you will if you will um and if you're watching on youtube please uh hit this if you if you haven't yet please hit the subscribe button wherever that is i don't know where it is um and the little bell icon so that you'll see every day when i've uploaded my my latest video to the tube um it will let you know and you can get your coffee and get in front of the computer screen or your phone or wherever it is and you and, and watch my 
watch my mental meanderings, listen to my yakety yaks. Anyway, have a fantastic day further, people, and catch you again the same time tomorrow. And uh, take it easy. Be good. Bye. Oodles of toodles. I meant to say oodles and oodles. And a whole bunch of doodles. Bye, folks.